Hi guys, today I wanted to do a comparison for you between two different microbiome testing companies. We had a client who was able to take a couple samples from the same bowel movement, same day, same time, everything, send them off to two different labs so that we could compare the results. This client sent the samples to Nirvana and also to Biomesite. I also think this is going to be a really great example for you of what a person who specializes in microbiome analysis might look for. Um, so one of the, the things I noticed within the comments uh, on some of the other videos that I've posted is that um, people are, a lot of people are just buying the microbiome test kits and then not going forward with the practitioner review of them. Um, and you really miss out on a lot of information when you do that. You're limited to dietary recommendations, which if you have a chronic health condition or something um, really imbalanced within your microbiome, you might actually need stronger um, str something stronger to help you shift the composition of your microbiome. So anyways, I'm going to give you a little bit of a taste of that today as well, um, at least as far as what I'm looking for goes and going beyond just the um, sort of like initial the initial results that or the client the client results that are sent to you versus what the practitioners might be looking for. So um, we've got the biome site here and this is actually the advanced results page for this client and this is my favorite page in all of biome site to be able to look through the raw data. Um, this is something that's not available with Nirvana, unfortunately, so I suppose that would be one of the first differences. But let's hop over and look at the Nirvana results. So Nirvana sends the client the results in a PDF format. Um, so again, you don't have access to raw data, just what they decide to show you in the PDF. Uh, and then for Biomesite results, you actually get your results. Well, you can either download a PDF or you can go on to, you can go into your login into the Biomesite platform and you can go through all of the different categories. Um, so a lot of the categories are similar between Biomesite and Nirvana. Um, they show you a lot of the same things. They do look at end products. Um, so here, Instead of having it labeled end products, you have short chain fatty acids, you have neurotransmitters, toxins, um, and other some nutrient end products as well. Let's go back to Nirvana. Um, right, so Nirvana, we're looking at on this page, the phylum level. And so we want to look at the broadest categorization of microbes first. Um, this is where we always start. And we can see here that this person, they're from Mickeydees. Um, they've got a relative abundance of 64%. Bacteroidetes, 30%. Proteobacteria is quite low, which is good. So 1% there. Actinobacteria, 3%. Now, let's compare that to Biomesite. I've taken the liberty of just writing out some of this information from Biomesite into a Word doc because Biomesite can take a little bit to load sometimes, and I just want to be quick and efficient with this. Um, where did those results go? Uh, I've got a couple clearly projects going on today. Here we go. So let's go to Phyla. So it's pretty similar as far as what the quantities that they detected. Um, for Mickeydees, 63%, only 1% off, 25% Bacteroidetes, that's pretty close. They did find a little bit more, a bit more proteobacteria, and so on biome site I would dive into that, I would check and see, okay, which proteobacteria are actually present and what can we do to shift that. Um, actinobacteria, 4% on Nirvana, they're 3.8, so very, very close. Let's look at, well, let's go here back to Nirvana and see at the family level. We can look at the family level. We can also look at the genus level. So let's do that. Um, so as far as what was detected the genus level, we've got Bacteroides is the highest, and I would say this is a little bit out of range, so it's high. We could work on reducing that Bacteroides, and that can be done with diet for the most part. 
got a couple other ones here. Let's see how this compares to biome site. And so I didn't break it down by family, genus, and biome site. It's actually broken down a little bit differently, but we can look anyways. So for example, Rosaburia is 11.3. We've actually got 6.6 .6 percent here so there's a bit of a difference there um, so they may be working with slightly different ranges for some of these things or um, sometimes there's classification differences there's a lot going on in the microbiome world as far as classification goes and changes in classification so sometimes species get shunted into a different genus or a different class um, it's really it's a lot to stay on top of let's look at bacteroides just to see how it compares. So 21%, pretty close to 24 I'd say. Yeah, it's pretty clear to me that it's still just a little bit on the high side, uh, especially since Bacteroides balances out Prevotella. So these two, um, they compete with each other. And if you have high Bacteroides, you're more likely to have low Prevotella. Um, if we can increase the Prevotella, which you do by increasing your intake of grains or mushrooms, beta-glucans, um, you can increase the Prevotella, which will help to suppress the Bacteroides. So there's a little tip for you there and just something on the relationships between the different microbes, which is something that's not always conveyed in these simple PDFs that are sent from the microbiome testing facilities. We've got, let's see, Clostridia is good. Acromancia is on the low end. Let's see what they found for Acromancia. If they listed it at all. All right, we might have to come back to that one. Instead, let's look at the top. They did list the top species by relative abundance. Let's look at this and then also compare this to the biome site top species so we'll go into the advanced results in biome site we'll go full taxonomy this is what i mean with the loading <laughs> sometimes i just don't want to wait um okay so here biome site in the biome site world, the top species is actually Fecalibacterium prosnitzi. So here we're seeing Eubacterium rectale. That's a bit different. Um, they do, they did find Fecalibacterium in the top four, though it's not necessarily prosnitzi. Oh, the prosnitzi is number seven or eight. Okay, so a couple differences. I mean, nothing major here. And these are really like fairly anti-microbial or anti-inflammatory microbes anyways. Um, this one, this is one of the classification changes. I believe this one actually was once Bacteroides and now it's this funny name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce on here. Um, okay, let's see, go back here. Yes, the, see on biome site, here it is. The, it is listed as Bacteroides dori, and it's within the top three. We've got Rosaburia, Blodia. Just checking out the raw data here in order of abundance for this person's sample. Okay, let's check out diversity. So their diversity index is different. Um, so that's out of 10, so we've got alpha diversity 8.9, beta diversity is 8.3, and biome site just looks at alpha diversity. So their score was 80, so pretty similar. Let's see, they check for pathogens, and they did find some C. difficile, but they're, I believe, they usually list, yeah, no virulence factors. So, um, that is good. C. difficile is not behaving like a pathogen, um, not releasing virulence factors. E. coli is within range. Bacteroides fragilis is within range. Let's check out some of these other. This were, these are all of the pathogens tested. So 
none of they would have listed them if any of those came up a short chain fatty acid summary so we've got I guess this is the total um, so low total is low butyrate needs improvement propionate needs improvement acetate needs improvement so let's go back and look at the biome site version yeah i mean so for biome site actually and this is an important difference biome site is listing the end products based on the microbes that they found so they're not actually measuring the end products in the stool which if you go with different testing facilities they sometimes will measure the actual amount of end product in the stool which uh, can be helpful um, rather than just making the assumption that this is the, the amount of end product that is actually being produced by the microbes because microbes um, they don't always behave the way we expect them to behave they can actually exchange genes with each other which means that they can um, actually take on different care they may behave differently or take on different characteristics so one that typically produce butyrate may not be producing butyrate now right now because it's doing something else um, so in general, we can assume characteristics of microbes, but they're, but not always. There's always an if, right? So definitely, I mean, the biome site made it look like short chain fatty acid production is okay, but my I would imagine that um, we actually do need to put in a fair bit of work, especially knowing this client and knowing their symptoms. Okay, common commensal microbes. Actually, let's go back to end products. Um, so lactate is considered a toxin when it's high. So let's see, biome site found a little bit of lactate, but it didn't list it as um, majorly high, or maybe it's pretty similar actually. Okay, polyamine. Biome site doesn't look for polyamines, so this is a little. This is a helpful difference. Um, we've got GABA production, glutathione production by your microbes, and just because your microbes are producing certain end products doesn't mean they're ending up in the body where they need to be. Um, so there's a lot that happens in between what happens in the gut and what happens elsewhere in the body. So with the example of serotonin, for example, just because you have microbes that are producing serotonin doesn't mean it ends up in your brain or reaching the receptors in other areas of the body. Um, sometimes there's cofactors that are required or things get they get produced and then eaten back up by the microbes or there are other things going on. Not to mention that, um, at least with this, the serotonin, um, it's actually the cells of the intestinal lining that produce most of the serotonin in the body and not the microbes as much. So Biomsite does look at the neurotransmitters as well, um, although I always take these neurotransmitter scores with a grain of salt for the reason that I just explained. Glutathione, Biomsite doesn't measure... They do look at some vitamin synthesis, but not B vitamins. You can, however, forward your results over to microbiome prescription if you want to look at the vitamin production um, based on your biome site results. And you can do that right in the biome site app. You would just click on external apps and then click send to microbiome prescription. And then you can see all sorts of end products in keg. Um, so enzymes that are being produced by your microbiome. I do find the microbiome prescription app pretty helpful actually. So, oh, they do list acromancy down here. Um, so not detected and pretty much the same for biome site. It was detected, but very low quantities, so. Yeah, definitely some work needed here. And then I like the, I mean, this is the most important thing if you're working on this on your own is the keystone species out of range. This is really what you can work from. Um, and I would say this is where to focus your energy um, and as well, potentially some of these end products, but it's really the microbes that are producing end products. So um, modifying the microbial composition is what you're gonna do to modify end product production. I think that's it. Um, that's really, 
the most important pieces in terms of what you get out of these two test results. So Nirvana and Biomsite, both great for different reasons. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's it. I'd love to do more of these comparisons. I plan on doing a comparison of the GI map to Biomsite. I can also do a comparison of Nutraval, the Genova Nutraval to the Great Plains Oat, if you guys want. Maybe if you just want to drop in the comments things that you'd like to see, questions that you have, um, maybe test comparisons that you'd like to see, and I'll try to get to it over time. All right, thanks for watching. I actually just wanted to add a couple more things and talk about the two kickers for me. Um, so the reasons why I'm shifting away from using Nirvana. Number one is that with the majority of clients who I've had purchased the Nirvana test kits, the results take in some cases nearly double the amount of time to come back. Now you'll notice if you go on the Nirvana website, you have the option of choosing two week return or four week return. Now 90% of my clients who purchased the test kits, it took nearly double the amount of time no matter what selection they went with. Number two was the customer service. So when we emailed about the slow to return test results or about discrepancies between their tests and other tests, it would sometimes take about two weeks for them to return our messages. Um, so, I mean, I'm working with people who have sometimes very severe health conditions and we're really counting on those test results to be able to move forward with a bio-individualized plan for them. So in the end, I decided to shift away from using Nirvana and use primarily Biomsite for looking at bacteria and for PCR testing. Biomsite has really great customer service. I do like the interface of Biomsite. Um, I will miss certain things about Nirvana, but in the end, it's just not worth it. So um, if I have to pick between the two, I am going with Biomsite. So I hope this information helps you with your microbiome testing and decision about your purchases of microbiome tests. If you'd like to learn more about what I do, you can visit www.wildbiome.ca. That is it for today and chat soon.